Hey everyone, my name is Gunther and welcome back to Ottawa Zoo. I'm really excited because today's episode marks another step towards finishing Ottawa Zoo with this absolutely amazing cougar habitat that came together with all of your help in the community. Today is a special episode, more so because we are one step closer to finishing Ottawa Zoo and part of the reason why I'm excited about that is Ottawa Zoo will be the first zoo I've actually completed. And you saw a little bit of a teaser in this in the last episode, in our doll sheep episode. So for those who watched that live tour at the very end, you would have seen some construction work happening here, uh, preparing for the new habitat. Now, from a cougar perspective, this was actually driven by the community. So I put up a poll and cougar was by far the most uh, requested animal to be added into the zoo. And I'm really excited about that. Uh, but we're running into a situation where we don't have very many North American animals left. Now on live stream, because this was built on live, uh, we had quite a few different recommendations for additional animals to add into the zoo or additional ways that we can fill up a lot of the space. And it's given me a lot to think about because I don't really know where I want to take this zoo, which I think is becoming a normal thing for this entire episode of this entire series. We're just having fun. We're building for, for the sake of building at this point. Now with this habitat, of course, we have to start off with a lot of terraforming. And this is going to act as the rear of Ottawa Zoo, which really means that there's nothing further past here. So I felt that I wanted to put in this really cool rocky bluff. And the idea behind it is like cougars are also called mountain lions. So I wanted like a mountain to kind of go with their habitat. And this also works really well with our doll sheep habitat just across the way. So a lot of rock work and I'm really happy with this technique that I've come up with or that I've stumbled across. I don't, I'm sure other more uh, prevalent builders have uh, come up with this idea, but utilizing the stamp tool and dragging out all of the terrain has really helped to create these really natural looking rock walls and mountain ranges. And the auto paint tool really helps us to find out where we want to put rocks to get that more natural look uh, for this entire area. And you can see it coming together. Now, admittedly, nothing is complete without some foliage and you're going to see that happen in a little bit because the foliage really takes it home and I can't stress enough, foliage makes such a huge difference in this game. Now we're moving pretty fast. We've pretty much finished all the rock work. We're going to see some foliage happen in a stop motion a video. I'm a huge fan of those because you can kind of see all the foliage come together. Uh, but part of the reason why is we actually built this on live stream, which I'm super thankful for. I love the fact that the community came together and helped me to build something truly amazing. And I can't thank you enough for helping. And this is a perfect example. Uh, you're seeing a mix up of this particular build, which is the fence barrier that we're going with. We ended up going with a hot wire on a four meter high barrier. Again, we have mountain lions or cougars probably not going to want to have the cougars get anywhere near you. They look cute, but I think that's before they kind of charge you. So knowing that we went with a hot wire, but that wasn't the first rendition of this build. And I think that's important for us to acknowledge more so because when you see a speed build, you see the final product and you're like, oh, wow, like they came up to this with this amazing idea all at once. But the reality is it doesn't happen all at once. A lot of times there's trial and error, there's test builds. So if you're new to Planet Zoo, and we're going to see a lot of new people to Planet Zoo, especially with the console edition, just know that not every build always starts out perfect. So if you build something and it doesn't look very good, you're not happy about it, that's okay. Restart. You're going to learn something new. And this is a perfect example. I'm trying to make a hot wire. And for those who don't know what a hot wire is, it's a type of barrier, it's an electrified fence that keeps uh, animals away from certain areas. Uh, and this is the part, it was a grasslands uh, animal signpost. I didn't really know this existed, but this piece is the thinnest wire piece that you're gonna find in the game. And I didn't really know it existed. And this is gonna be a game changer for me because it's going to help me to create some amazing things. Now with the majority of our habitat ready, it's time to do foliage. Again, we followed that same path, some buffalo grass some bushes and some trees, and that's pretty much about it for the habitat. Unfortunately though, we've been left with a pretty large open area between our moose habitat and our cougar habitat. And there's typically one of three ways you can fill this area in. You can do foliage, you can do a staff facility, or you can do a guest facility. Now that being said, we're building on franchise mode, which means that we actually have both guest and staff needs. So I opted for a different approach, which is actually gonna be a hybrid approach. And you're seeing it being built uh, as we kind of go. There's a lot of different ways I can kind of go around with this. And I'm just playing around with a lot of the, the form right now. And we're building it on the grid, which is super important because I want to make sure that nothing is going to like get all weird and janky, especially with the pathing system. 
So initially we're just testing everything out, making sure it all looks correct before I place it in its final home. We're just gonna be angled off a little bit and it's gonna kind of create this really cool offshoot for our guests to explore while they're walking through this area. Now, with our building in its final home, it's time to start working on our beautification process. And that's really important because right now it looks pretty bland and it's important for us to add some color. So we're gonna utilize a flower box for that, utilizing some dry stone. And to break up all the tall wood walls, as an example on the front, we're looking at a six meter wall. We're gonna utilize some beams to add some additional texture and break it up. And this is gonna really help out. On top of that, in a lot of the hard to reach areas, like you can see right here, we're gonna add some windows. This is just gonna to help to add some additional color to the area. So with our staff side of the facility complete, it's time for us to focus on the guest side. And there's two ways we can meet guest needs. We can utilize stalls or we can utilize vending machines. And for me, vending machines actually make more sense because they're smaller, can fit more in the area. And on top of that, we're gonna do something really cool with it. We're gonna embed it within the actual building. Now, in my eyes, when it comes to vending machines, you don't necessarily need access to the rear of the vending machine. All of your interior access is gonna be from the front. The front's gonna be like a door, you're gonna open it up and that's how you access everything. So you don't really need to have access to the rear, which means we can actually embed it in the building and it's gonna be pretty realistic. So with our vending machines placed, it's really time just to clean up the entire build. And step one, and pretty much the last step, is really just gonna be adding these beams all the way across. This is just gonna to help to hide a lot of the clipping areas from the vending machines to the rest of the pathing system. Now I did mention this was gonna be a hybrid zone and we've done our guest facilities, we've done our staff facilities. The last step is to add in our foliage. Again, we're gonna start with some buffalo grass. We're gonna add in these bushes, which are gonna to help to hide the back end of the area, add in some trees. And then lastly, we're gonna add in some barriers for our curbs. Now with that finally completed, it's safe to say that our hybrid facility is complete and I'm really happy with how it turned out. And hopefully you'll see that in the cinematic shots at the very end. Now, of course, the last stage of any habitat is some type of education sign. You're kind of seeing it come together. I'm not going to bore you with the details, though. You've seen me build these a ton of times. What I do want to say, though, is we're not going to have a traditional tour. You are going to see some cinematic shots at the very end, and I would love your feedback on what you think I could have done differently or what I could have improved. As always, as well, I want to say thank you very much for all of your support. It really helps me to become better builders. I wouldn't have been able to do it without you. And for all of our new console players who may be watching this episode, just know that when you first start off, things may not look great, but that's part of the joy of Planet Zoo is becoming bigger and better builders. And just know that even I was there uh, when I first started playing Planet Zoo. My builds weren't that great, and I learned together with the community. Now, speaking of the community, if you want to join our community, we do have a link for the Discord on the channel. Feel free to pop on over, and people are more than happy to provide feedback. Now on that note, for our console players, let me know in the comments below which animal you're gonna add to your zoos first. I would love to hear what your favorite animal is and if it's actually even in Planet Zoo. Otherwise, I just wanna say thank you very much for all of your support again, and sit back and check out some of these really cool cinematic shots of Cougar Canyon.